Welcome to Noise Exposure and Hearing Conservation. My name is Marcus Wiesaw and I'll be your instructor for this course. My contact information is listed on the screen, so if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me at your discretion. Now let's go to the objectives for noise exposure and hearing conservation. There are four. I want you to be able to explain occupational noise exposure, state the permissible exposure limit for noise for an eight hour workday. I want you to understand when audiometric testing is required and given a noise reduction rating and ambient sound pressure in decibels, calculate noise exposure. In order to calculate noise exposure, we must use some kind of measurement tool. Usually we use a noise meter or often we call it a noise dosimeter. And I want you to pay special note to the picture that's on your screen now of the noise dosimeter. You will see the letters A, B, and C somewhere in the middle of the machine where the readout screen is. Now for regulatory purposes we are almost always going to use the A weighted scale and so we're going to have a readout of noise in decibels which would be the units of sound and then we're going to classify the the scale that we used. So in particular if we have 90 decibels and we measure that with our noise dosimeter we will read that out as 90 dBA and the D is lowercase, the B is uppercase, and the A is uppercase. So the B and C scales are hardly ever used however the B scale is, is nearly never used and then the C-weighted scale is used uh, rarely for other purposes. And if you need more information on that, feel free to give me a call or email me to discuss it further. So what I have here listed on the screen now is a chart of occupational noise exposure uh, and uh, the amount of time that an employee can be exposed to certain decibels on the A-weighted scale. So for a regular eight hour day, we can expect an employee to be exposed on average to approximately 90 decibels on the A weighted scale. And as you can tell, if we are uh, exposed to greater sound pressures, for example, 105 dBA, we are looking at uh, a total duration of one hour. And so I want you to put this into perspective because a lawnmower runs at about 110 decibels on the A-weighted scale. And you can see here clearly that OSHA would only allow a half an hour to do that kind of work. And so uh, we have to be careful about the types of noise exposures that we encounter and that we're exposed to over the day. And so what we're really concerned with is an eight hour average and so as you can see here depending on what work that we we're doing uh, if we're working around heavy machinery if we are in an office setting I mean, we have to account for everything that we're doing all day and then sort of average that out but in in general what we are looking for is to keep noise exposure limited to 90 decibels on the A weighted scale for an eight hour day. Some examples of hearing protection uh, are listed on your screen now. We have, there are many. We have earmuffs, earplugs, canal caps, and so you're probably pretty familiar with these types of hearing protection, but if you're not, there are some examples for you. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the NRR, or what's called a noise reduction rating. So once we figure out what the sound level is in a particular environment using our noise dosimeter, then what we do is we get a baseline for what the ambient sound pressure is. So for example, if we have a noisy environment in a machine shop and there's a lot going on, it's very loud, and we have a hundred and 22 decibels in that particular area because let's say we have uh, Caterpillar electrical generators going and we have a bunch of other things going as well in terms of equipment and so it's very loud in there. Uh, we see in the right hand 
side uh, Bilsom makes a uh, hearing protection uh, earplug that has an NRR rating of 22 decibels. So if our ambient sound pressure is 122 decibels on the A-weighted scale and we have a noise reduction rating of 22, we simply subtract the noise reduction rating from the ambient sound pressure. And so in this particular example we would say 122 subtracted from 22 decibels or, or subtract 22 decibels from 122 uh, more specifically and we get about 100 decibels but if you go back to your chart here you see that we can only allow employees to work on an 8 hour work day uh, to the sound pressure of 90 decibels on the A weighted scale so as you can tell we might have to limit some employees in how much exposure that they have to certain environments and so that's a management issue and it's also uh, something that employees can help out with and, and kind of inform management about in terms of their own exposure. And so here's some other ways uh, employees use uh, different types of hearing protection to uh, protect themselves further. What I really want to draw your attention to are the caps that you can see in the uh, upper left hand and upper right hand box. Now these are really convenient and usually uh, you can find these caps to have a noise reduction rating of about 40 and the foam earplugs are usually going to be about 30 to 33 or so uh, decibels for the noise reduction rating. And so what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about just briefly here is that some noise is what we call an impact noise and other noise is continuous. And so if you think about continuous noise, it's literally just, it's a hum, it's a continuous uh, level of sound pressure that's moving along in the air. And a lot of people don't understand things like jackhammers and equipment uh, that consistently moves and, and does work, uh, they often put off continuous noise. And then if we add factors like reverberation uh, to the equation, then what we do is we get a little bit uh, more of a compounded noise pressure. And so some noise is going to be instant and uh, it's going to be instant and non-continuous or an impact noise and others, uh, other types of noise is going to be continuous and uh, what we're really interested in measuring uh, is, is both as a matter of fact. But we want to limit employee exposure first of all to continuous noise so that we don't exceed the permissible exposure limit of 90 dBA over an 8 hour shift. But we also don't want sound pressures that are sudden and shock employees and potentially do harm uh, because they're so loud and, uh, and short in, in duration. And so I want to wrap up our presentation by discussing hearing conservation. Now, an employer must maintain that their work environment over an eight-hour shift is less than 85 decibels on average. And we call that the action level. So what we would do, for example, in a particular work area or work location is we would conduct a noise study and measure the noise throughout the day. And one way to do that is to have employees wear noise dosimeters all day and then download the data from those little devices and that will give us an idea of what their exposure was or we can take intermittent exposure uh, tests uh, throughout the day and determine what the sound levels are uh, that way but nonetheless the action level is 85 decibels on the A-weighted scale and so if an employer finds that their work area is 85 dBA or greater we must take action and implement a hearing conservation program. So a couple of things about the hearing conservation program. First of all, it is legal and it is absolutely necessary when we get past the action level. And so uh, the hearing conservation program is going to require employees to undergo an annual audiogram and they're going to get a baseline reading of employees and then Every year thereafter, we're going to ask the employee to go back to 
the audiologist for for more testing and if there is what we call a standard threshold shift over time or it's abbreviated STS frequently but if there is a standard threshold shift detected in an employee what we've noticed is some hearing loss and there are a lot of reasons for that it could be temporary it could be permanent uh, sometimes it's due to what we call presbycusis or hearing loss due to age uh, and so we look at different factors but nonetheless when an STS is detected an employer has uh, 21 days to notify the employee of the standard threshold shift and if there is a definitive standard threshold shift detected by uh, audiometric testing we find that sometimes this requires a possible job transfer other times we just may implement additional hearing protection or uh, we might put mufflers on machines for an employee we might do a lot of different things to reduce that sound pressure and the other thing that's quite important these days as more and more general contractors select subcontractors based on their OSHA 300 log metrics we find that this is a big impact on that because the STS or standard threshold shift is indeed an OSHA recordable incident and so we've only barely begun to skim the surface on hearing conservation and noise exposure but I am available for questions if you have any or would like to discuss this material in further depth and so feel free to contact me if the need arises. Have a great day.